Well, in Ontario, nearly four years to the day that a man died on the floor of a jail cell. Newly filed court documents suggest that the guards who were restraining him in his final moments violated the use of force rules set out in their training. Suleiman Fakiri lived with schizophrenia. His family have been pushing for a thorough investigation into his death. Suleiman's brother, Yusuf Fakiri, joins us now. Thank you so much for your time today, Yusuf. Uh, first of all, how are you feeling after hearing about these new developments and the details in these new court documents. Thank you very much for having me, Sonia. Um, shock, disappointment, anger. Um, what this is effectively confirming is that uh, the guards that are responsible for the, for the death of my brother, they're admitting that they did not follow uh, their own ministry's policies. Now, this is all part of a civil case that your family's brought forward. So it's taken a very long, long time to get to this stage. Emotionally, you must be exhausted. Well, Sonia, we, for four years, we've been fighting. And this is beyond um, this is beyond the civil case. This is uh, this is for the dignity of all Canadians suffering from mental illness. Uh, the police, there was two criminal police investigations yet profoundly and remarkably and astonishing. They found no criminal uh, charges, even though the guards have now admitted um, that they not only uh, put Suleiman on his stomach down, they pepper sprayed him with the spit hood, which in itself goes against the policies and the manual of the spit hood. And according to Don Rosa, effectively she said that this is a triple threat of asphyxia so i don't know why there's this um there's effectively there's this mystery as to how Suleiman died and uh, this is the tragic part in this case in itself you know for those that are watching who don't know the details of how your brother ended up in this situation could you just give us a, a bit more of the backstory there and what happened Absolutely, Sonia. Well, that in itself is another tragedy. Uh, first of all, um, the jails have now become the new hospitals for individuals suffering from mental illness. Suleiman was uh, three days before his death, he was supposed to be transferred to a hospital. He was only there in that jail for 11 days. At the time of his death, both his legs and his hands were tied. He was he had 50, uh, 50 bruises on his body and he was pepper sprayed twice. This is all information according to the coroner. These are the last few minutes of my late brother's life where he spent it suffocating to death. Uh, a Canadian man who deserve better and my family deserving better. And the Ontario government f seems to fail to recognize the tragedy of this. So once you found out that he had died in that situation, tell us what then happened that, that got you to this stage. And I'm talking about the Ontario Provincial Police. Uh, I understand that no charges were laid, but what did they tell you at that time in terms of uh, the evidence that they were basing that decision on? The Ontario Provincial Police made a remarkable and astonishing rationale in that they said that we cannot press charges against the guards because we do not know which guard gave the fatal blow, even though they admit that the eyewitness, Mr. John Thibault, who saw everything, his testimony was credible. They don't deny that this was a beating. And this new information, Sonia, effectively confirms that the OPP did not do their job. It effectively confirms that the OPP uh, essentially, you know, had a different standard for law enforcement for, uh, for the rest of us. Um, and that's that's what this is all about, is that for accountability and transparency, we want justice for my late brother, because justice for Suleiman Fakiri is justice for every Canadian who's suffering from mental illness within the parameters of the justice system. What are your lawyers telling you now about what this could potentially mean for a criminal case being brought forward? Well, Sonia, that, that's what we're looking for. We're going to keep fighting. Um, we're waiting for the government to do the right thing. We're waiting. For, we were waiting for the police to do the right thing. We let the process get through it, uh, you know, follow its process. But essentially, uh, it seems that the government and the police are more interested in, in having a double standard and also pushing my family through this nightmare. But what we're going to do since we've done December 15th uh, is that we're going to keep fighting. We're going to keep fighting for Suleiman. We're going to keep fighting for, for what happened to him because what happened to him was tragic, was wrong, and goes against every standard uh, for individuals here in our country. But, you know, the, the, this, uh, these new court documents that say that, um, that the guards broke those use of force rules that, that is part of their training, I'm just, what, what are your lawyers telling you in terms of what that could potentially mean uh, for a criminal case to be now brought forward? Well, the criminal case, Sonia, is not decided by our lawyers. It's essentially, um, or we, uh, it's essentially decided by the OPP. The criminal case has been closed by the Ontario Provincial Police, Sonia. There's now an inquest coming up, uh, but uh, the ball is on the OPP's court, the Ontario Provincial Police Court, to open a new uh, criminal investigation. 
So they've closed the investigation, but it does not mean that my family is not going to continue fighting for that criminal investigation because these guards who killed Suleiman Fikiri might kill someone else next. And they, nine of the 11 guards, Sonia, are still employees of the Ontario government. Yeah, this nine is what I'm trying to understand, you know, because it's the details in these documents that can change so much for you and your brother's case. Uh, you know, how are you going to now push for those decisions to be made based on that new evidence? Absolutely. So the next step, Sonia, the next effective step in terms of my brother's case is the inquest uh, that will take place sometime in 2021. We don't know the exact date. And in that inquest, more information is going to come out. And then at that time, um, you know, it will, we will we will continue to push for a criminal investigation. But right now, um, it's not up to us to, 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 to open this investigation. It's up to the Ontario Provincial Police. Um, for some people, they may see some similarities in a case that's been talked about a lot here over the last few days. It's the case of Miles Gray, uh, a man here in Vancouver who died. And, uh, you know, this week uh, the family was told that no charges would be brought forward against the officers involved uh, because there were no civilian witnesses. Um, uh, there were very differing accounts from the officers, from officer to officer, in terms of what actually happened. Uh, you know, this is a case that goes back many years uh, from uh, the officers initially not even cooperating in terms of giving evidence. But, you know, that final blow to the family being told that uh, no charges are going to be laid against those officers. Um, and the conclusion being that Miles Gray died of cardiac arrest. But, you know, there's not much there in terms of what led to that. Again, here's a man who dealt with several very extensive injuries. What do you say to, to his family who gave a lot of interviews this week and said that, you know, they feel very disheartened and broken by that uh, uh, that, that statement, um, but it also doesn't give them much hope on where they go from here. Well, first of all, uh, my condolences to the Gray family. I, um, I've been following the story very closely, and um, I want to say that the Fakiri family stands shoulder to shoulder with the Gray family. And I want them to know that um, although the police failed to do the right thing, and uh, even though they were responsible for the death of Mr. Gray, my, I tell the family to continue fighting and that we'll be together with them. And why I have to remember, we, and we all have to remember, that it seems like all, all too often, law enforcement has a different standard for itself than the rest of us as us Canadians. And the tragedy that befell the Gray family must be understood that there will be more tragedies like this if we do not change how law enforcement approaches individuals with mental illness and also how they need to themselves be held to, a, to an account. Uh, but what I can say, uh, just like Suleiman and just like uh, Mr. Gray, is that they're both alive before this interaction with law enforcement. Uh, what Suleiman was with the guards, what Mr. Gray was with the police, he, they're dead after. The responsibility lies with the police. And, and, and what's all with the responsibility lies with the guards. But what needs to be understood is that we as families not only do we lose our loved ones, but by this lack of accountability and justice in our loved ones, it seems that our loved ones continues to die in front of us. But that does not necessarily mean that we cannot stop fighting. And that's what I say with the Gray family, that, we, uh, you know, if you can, we, we must continue to fight and that we will stand shoulder to shoulder with them. Because hope is not given to us by the police or law enforcement. Hope is given by, by us within, you know, fellow Canadians that know our tragic story, uh, because we need to force our leaders and, uh, you know, the law enforcement to do the right thing. But what does it take as a family um, to bring up your own action in the way that you have? You know, uh, Sonia, it's a very tough question, but I'll answer it. Um, it's been a tough fight. Um, it's been a heavy price that uh, my family's paid. Uh, my mom continues to, to be in pain every day. Uh, the whole week, uh, this whole week, I was in tears after this new information came out. Um, but what we take solace in is that we can we we know that Suleiman's legacy will be honored by us continuing uh, to honor him and talking about this, even though the journey in itself is a painful one even though the process in itself is a difficult one because um, he, he dies in front of us again and again. But our hope is tied to the fact that people are see Suleiman's story as an inspiration for change, that their stories might change because of Suleiman's death. Suleiman is gone, just like Mr. Gray. But what can change is that another Suleiman, another Mr. Gray, another Ashley Smith might have a life where they're celebrating their birthdays, where they're loved, where they're having family. And that's what it's all about. But to be honest with you, it's been a painful journey. It's been a difficult journey, but it's a journey that I would not change because um, it's something that we have to do and we chose to fight. Well, I can hear the pain in your voice, Yusuf. Um, thank you so much for sharing your time and talking to us.
um, about your journey so far. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sonia, for your time.